I don't think I could have possibly ever had a better father. I, I, I'm going to miss him forever. I do believe I had the best father on the planet. A lot of the things I regurgitate are regurgitated from him. A lot of the things I say, he literally said to me line for line. I believe that he was very morbid in his approach to life. And he wanted me to understand that he will not be here forever. And he wanted me to understand that when he was gone, I had a duty to fulfill. He talked about dying a lot, which I guess is kind of unusual, but he would. Even though he was relatively young, he died when he was 58. But he was a chess, yeah, he was a chess professional. He was a professional chess player. He was one of the best chess players in the world. And he, what's most interesting about him is he almost predicted the future absolutely and utterly perfectly. He was talking about the Ukraine-Russia war back in 2013. And he was talking about how the gay, children, gay people can't have children, so they're going to come for your children. Trust me, that's what they're going to do. The children are next. Like, he'd say all these things back like 10 or 11 years ago. And I'd be like, all right, dad, you're a bit crazy. Calm down. But uh, I guess when you're a chess player, you see the future. And he raised me with absolute accountability, and he certainly raised me and Tristan to be, he understood what the world expects of men, and he raised us to be strong. And even when we were in jail, my mother would call, I'd speak to her on the phone, and she'd say, how are you doing? And I'd say, oh, don't worry. And my, she would say, yeah, dad raised you for this. Like, we were always raised to be warriors. So I don't think I could have possibly ever had a better father. I, I, I'm going to miss him forever. And I think the best thing I can do is be the best version of myself to give honor and respect to him. Where did he pick up chess? He taught himself. And he taught himself and he just read a couple books. I think he read three chess books and ended up being one of the best players in the world. And it's incredible. It, it's incredible. But it's actually interesting when you talk about, we were just discussing in affinity and how people are imperfect people and how it uh, allows you to actually teach things better. My father, towards the end of his chess career especially, made most of his money teaching chess in inner city schools because he's a big black guy. So the children would be like, ah, okay, I'll listen to this man. So yeah, he, he did fantastically well in terms of teaching, especially disadvantaged children. And uh, he taught himself, and I wish I had his mind. I'm not nearly as intelligent as he was. I wish I was. you got to be real smart to be a good chess player. You've got to be better than smart. I actually think you go beyond the realm of smart into, a, I wouldn't say he was on the spectrum, but you certainly get to a new level of socio interactions. Do you understand? I'd go to chess tournaments when I was a kid and everybody there would be a world level chess player and everyone was a bit strange, a little bit. Um, I don't know if it's like that anymore. I, I see the chess community has now moved online. There's a lot of them playing online and they seem a lot more normal than the grandmasters I remembered. <laughs> I remembered old grandmasters, half drunk, ex-KGB. It was a bit different back then, but um, yeah, I wish I had his level of intellect. He was certainly the smartest person I've ever known. And even when he died, I got endless emails from people I'd never heard of who just said, I, I worked with your dad and I don't think you understand how smart he was. He I, served America, yeah? He served America. He was in the Air Force and he was a linguist for the CIA. He, he joined the Air Force and ended up being a linguist for the intelligence. What other languages did he speak? He spoke Russian, German, Spanish, and English, but officially he was supposed to speak Russian. He learned, he assimilated Russian in two weeks. I think he holds the Air Force record. Okay, so he's, he's very smart. Yeah, super, ridiculously smart. Yeah. I got an email from somebody when he died and they said that, I just want to send you an email. You don't know who I am. I was serving with your father in the armed forces. I don't, you tell everybody your dad was smart and they're not going to understand how smart he was. And I want to give you a quick story. I was living with a Russian woman and I already spoke Russian conversationally when I began the Air Force training to learn Russian. Your father knew nothing, didn't know the alphabet, didn't know nothing. And within two and a half weeks, he was correcting everybody, including the professor on Russian. Yeah. So like he just read the dictionary. I saw my dad sit there and read a dictionary, just read it. And that was it. Yeah. Everyone called him E.T. Yeah. Like, he was tough on you. E. He was certainly tough on me. And I, I, can't, I can't express enough how grateful I am for that. I, we live in a world now where I'm going to say that my dad hit me when I made a mistake. And everyone's going to lose their minds. And they're going to pretend I was somehow abused. And that somehow my childhood was terrible. And I could not thank. If he was come down to earth today, I would shake his hand and say, thank you for absolutely everything you gave me. Including discipline. Including understand that, understanding that in the harsh realities of the real world, there is a line. And if you cross that line, violence appears. So I think if you have a son and you're not preparing him for absolute difficulty, you're doing him a disservice. 